just what is the Bible meaning of the word meekness as used in the Bible? Let's learn about that in this video. In our culture today, when we hear the word meek, usually people think about somebody that's weak. They may be small in stature. They might be mousy. They're like a pushover. They're usually quiet people. They often are gullible and they're compliant and they're submissive. Somebody that you can just walk all over. That's what people usually think about meek. And the dictionary definitions of that uh, are, support that. It's enduring injury and patience without resentment. It's someone that's mild and won't say anything. And a scary part of the definition in Merriam-Webster and also dictionary.com and Miriam Webster says it's somebody that's deficient, deficient in spirit and courage. And that's absolutely nothing to do with being meek. That is just not true. In dictionary.com, it says it's someone that's overly submissive or compliant, someone that's spiritless and tame. And when we think about biblical meekness, to say that that involves spirit, someone that's deficient in spirit is completely 180 degrees opposite of what it means to be meek in the Bible. So we're going to look at that in this video. Please consider subscribing. There's a little red button in the bottom right hand corner. And let's move on in this study. Okay, first of all, Jesus Christ is meek. He's meek. So when we think about somebody that's submissive, somebody that's overly compliant or gullible or weak, that's just not the case. Jesus Christ, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in, in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Matthew 21, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the fall of an ass. He came in a very humble manner, because he was humbled as a man. But that doesn't mean he's weak, obviously. He's humble. So we're going to look more at this meekness. Even Paul, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. But we know from other places that that, that doesn't mean he's weak. It's the Greek word praeus, which means in the Greek mild or humble or gentle. But we want to understand the Bible meaning of it by looking at scriptures and scriptures to understand. We see that Jesus was not at all mild or submissive or moderate. John 2, he and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple. That doesn't sound like today's definition of meek. And the sheep and the oxen poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. He was courageous. He had he had strength. He, he, he's humble, but and all this, of course, has a spiritual meaning behind it in John 2. But he was a strong person. And to the religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees had said, he said, you are the, of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He constantly was in conflict with the Pharisees. And he said it like it was. He wasn't ashamed or afraid or too timid to say anything. So Jesus is a good example of what it means to be meek. And again, we're going to look at the scriptures on this momentarily. But before we do that, Moses is another example. The man Moses was very meek above all the men that were upon the face of the earth. Yet Moses was the one that God used, and he went right in front of the king, Pharaoh of Egypt. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Moses was bold. He went right into the king, right into the king, and told him like as it was, and he commanded of the king. Psalm 119, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. Moses wasn't ashamed. He was bold. Okay, meekness, finally, is also a characteristic of a Christian. All true Christians are meek. Galatians 5, for the fruits of the Spirit, and one of them is meekness. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. It's a characteristic of being a Christian is to be meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. Psalm 76, God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth. All people being saved are meek, were made meek in Christ. 
For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. So we're going to now turn and see a very important passage in the Bible that helps us understand exactly what meekness means. Okay, so to get a biblical, biblical definition of meekness, we get help in the Bible as we compare Scripture with Scripture. And we find in James chapter 3, which talks a lot about wisdom, we see in James 3 verse 13, it says, Who is wise and knowing among you? Let him show his works by his good conduct. And the way he shows his good behavior is with meekness of wisdom. Meekness of wisdom. And when we look a few verses down in James chapter 3, verse 17, we find a definition of meekness, of what it means to be, to, to be meek in wisdom. So we can apply this to what meekness means biblically, and we find harmony with how Christ was and how Moses was and how all Christians are supposed to be. So let's look at verse 17. The wisdom that is from above is first truly pure. Number one, pure. Two, peaceable. Three, gentle. Four, easy to be entreated. And that's not a very good translation in the King James. And we're going to look at that. Full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So we're going to look at these eight characteristics of meekness. And we're going to do that by comparing Scripture with Scripture. We're going to let the Bible explain itself to us. So let's move on in this study. Okay, the first characteristic of being meek is to be pure. Pure. And the word pure in the Greek is closely related to the word holy, which means set apart. But purity means to not have the dirt and the, the uncleanness in one's life. It means to be pure. And all Christians, although we're not without sin, we're not perfect, but we're taught in 1 Peter 1.22, you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. We obey and we follow the word of God. And we do that through the Spirit because we have the indwelling Holy Spirit. God's at work in us both to do and to will for his good pleasure. And it's a very humbling thing that we have God is doing the work in us. And we do it unto unfeigned or unhypocritical love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. The whole commandments can be summed up in loving God and loving your neighbor. And that's what the goal is of our, of our behaviors is that we don't hurt people. We treat them with, with all the love we can. Gentleness, kindness, compassion, mercy, etc. 1 John 3, when he shall appear, Jesus Christ shall appear, we shall be like him. We should see him as he is. Every man that has his hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Jesus is pure. We have that hope within us. We have the Holy Spirit working. We're pure. And someday we'll be like him. We'll see him as he is. We'll be his servants forever. Neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep yourselves pure as the command of the Bible. We do that be by an obedient to the word of God. We know that the Spirit is working through us, and we do that with an object of loving God and loving our neighbor. The second characteristic of being meek is that we are peaceable. And we can often get the wrong connotation from that. We think that being peaceable is that we just sit on the side, we're quiet, we don't say anything, we just let things happen. But that's not what that means to be peaceable. When we talk about peaceable in the Bible, it's salvation. Romans 5.1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are seen as peaceable because we are, we are at peace with God. We're no longer at war with him. Great shall be the peace of your children, Isaiah 54. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Salvation rules in our hearts, Colossians 3.15. Philippians 1, the one preached Christ out of contention, not sincerely, but the other, which is what Christians were supposed to do, we are peaceable. We know that we have that relationship with God. We're not at enmity, but we do it out of a spirit of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. We don't go twist arms. We share the peace of God because we're peaceable people, but we do it in a defensive manner. We don't cause fights. We don't become obnoxious. 
James 3.18, the very next verse after James 3.17, which we're studying, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. And in other words, the righteous things that we do, the love, the joy, all those things, we sow those in peace because we are, have peace with God by those who make peace. And we make peace by our witness, our witness that we're different. And then when people ask us why we're different, we, we have a defense, the gospel itself, the relationship we have with God. Matthew 10, if that house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. As we travel about in our lives, we bring peace to other people. We share the word of God. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. Let your peace return. And what does that mean? And we see in the next verse, whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house of the city, shake off the dust of your feet. And in other words, as we run into different situations or places in our life, phases of our life too, we share the peace of Christ. And sometimes we're not wanted. And people want to just start fights with this. And they want to start debating. And we, we just move on. We move on into another place that we can share the truth of God. Number three. This is the third characteristic of what it means to be meek. And what it really means is that we don't get into arguments and we don't get into strife over the word of God and over what people challenge us on and they want to start a fight and they want to correct us and everything else. We see the same word gentle used in Titus 3.2, be no brawlers, but gentle. It's the same Greek word as in James 3.17, gentle, shown all meekness unto men. So when people, they, they expect us to want to fight and want to fight about the Bible, and want to debate the Bible. And I've had this happen to me personally many, 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 many times. And it, it's the, the, the fighters, the brawlers, it's that Greek word mashi, which means a fighter. And it's related, the, the cognate of that word is the word used for sword. It's somebody that comes to you with the sword of the word of God or the Bible and, and tries to point out something. Oh, that's not right. It's this. And they want to debate and they want to fight. And that's all they're concerned about. And they're forgetting about the love of God and the love of neighbor. And we're commanded in the Bible. And I have two examples here, but there's many more to avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings. That's that same Greek word, mashi, strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain. I've had many times happen to me. Somebody wants to challenge me on something over and over and that's fine they should they should examine that and make a decision for themselves what's right and what's wrong and study the bible but to, to create endless fights and arguments is not appropriate foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they gender strife again strife is that same word mashe the servant of the lord must not strive must not mashe but be gentle be gentle unto all men. We don't want to, we just want to share the truth of the word of God the best that we understand it, but we don't want to fight about it. 1 Peter 3.15, be always ready to give an answer to a man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you, in you with meekness and fear. We are defensive. We're not to be offensive. We're to be gentle and we're not to strive. The fourth characteristic of being meek is that we are well persuaded. We have an assurance of eternity. We're well persuaded. And it's we're confident in that we know Christ and what we believe. The word that's used in the King James for this, this is easily entreated. And that word easily entreated can easily imply somebody that's gullible, that's very easy to be a pushover, that's a vulnerable person. It's the Greek word, the word translated easily entreated. It's the Greek word eupethes. And it literally means well persuaded. The word you, E-U, is always the word good or well. And the word pethes is always translated persuaded. So when we put those together, it's something that's well persuaded. And that should be the, the usage of this word. But And we see this word petho or pethes used elsewhere. And it points to us what it means for a Christian to be well persuaded. We're well persuaded because we have confidence, we have the hope of eternity, we have assurance of eternal life, and that characterizes how we behave and how we act. 2 Timothy 1.12, I am not ashamed. 
I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And in other words, we're not ashamed of what we are as a Christian. We have assurance of eternity. That day, that last day of, of eternity with Christ forever. Philippians 1, 6, being confident. And there, that word confident there is the same word as persuaded, petho. Confident of this thing, that he has begun a good work, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the last day. Until the, the day of entrance into eternity. 2 Corinthians 1, 9, we had a sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust or be persuaded in ourselves, but we're persuaded and trusting in God, which raises the dead. Again, it's looking to the resurrection. We're not looking to the things this are. We're always looking to that better day. And people will see that as one of our characteristics that, oh, they're always looking to the eternity. They're looking to the future. They're hopeful. They're confident in Christ. That's, that's what the word well-pleased means here in the context. Five, full of mercy, full of mercy. The meek person, the meek person will be a very merciful person. And when we see the word mercy in the Bible, it really has to do with concern for the poor and the needy, poor and the needy. There's people that are poor that desperately need help just to survive. There's people that are needy. They might not be poor, but they're in desperate need of help. And that could be people all over the spectrum. Luke 10, which now of these three, this is the, the story of the, the Good Samaritan. Which three of thee was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? He said, him that showed mercy on him. Jesus said, go and do likewise. The person that shows mercy is a meek person. They're trusting in Christ. They know that they don't deserve anything. They have compassion on other people that are poor. This good Samaritan was, was robbed and he was beat up. He was laying on the side of the road. And we show mercy for that person that needs help. We don't know what that, the social status of that person was, but we see that it's a person that needs help. It could be anybody around us. We see those people in society all around us every day. Proverbs 14. He that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker but he that honors him has mercy on the poor we have mercy on the poor people that are really in need all over this world people that are in need of of hearing the truth of physical things of that 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 support that they might need we're a witness of christ proverbs 14 he that despises his neighbor sins but he has mercy on the poor happy is he micah 6 8 he has showed thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. This idea about people not having empathy is unbelievably contrary to the word of God. Christians, by definition, meek people have empathy. They can relate to somebody suffering because they know what it's like to suffer and they can relate to it. It's all about empathy, full of mercy, full of good fruits full of good fruits and this has to do with spiritual fruit the person that's meek will show all those beautiful fruits the classic scripture galatians 5 the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness there's that word again temperance against such there is no law it's all these good behaviors of a person that make them nice to be around they're joyful, they're peaceful, they're loving, they're gentle, they're, they, they're willing to wait and suffer, long-suffering. It's a beautiful thing. Ephesians 5, now the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth. That's what it means to be meek, is to be full of righteousness and goodness and truth. Seven, seven, without partiality. And when we look at that literal word, it literally means without partiality. No discrimination. Galatians 3, 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. We shouldn't distinguish the persons, their, their, their race or their age or their, their sex or any other thing. We shouldn't even consider that a, pe a person's a person. They're a soul and spirit inside a fleshy body just like us. We don't discriminate based on anything. James 2, if they're coming to you assembly a man with a gold ring, and goodly apparel and there come also a poor man in vile raiment 
and you have respect to him that wears the gay or the bright clothing, and saying to him, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand there, or sit here in my foot. Are you not partial in yourselves and become judges of evil thoughts? We don't show partiality to the rich. And we see that all around us in our society today. The rich get special treatment. And that's wrong. We are impartial, no par par partiality at all. Just a little bit more, because to be meek is without partiality, and we face this every day. And it, it points to the fact that God saves from every race, every language, every culture. Acts 10, God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. A powerful verse in Revelation 7, there's many similar verses sprinkled through the book of Revelation. Revelation 7, 9, after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, this is so pointing to God's people, which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues. Nations points to cultures, kindreds points to races, people point to types of people that group together, they might be all sports fans or a type of people, it could be a, a union of people that are in a nation or a country. And tongues, which are languages. From all those diverse ways, we can't discriminate. We can't judge people by the color of their skin. And, by, and we want to make sure that we treat everybody fairly. And we don't want to be subject to a passive type of, of discrimination where we just... We will help the, the one that's, that looks like us and acts like us, but the other one that doesn't look like us, we're not going to hurt them, but we're not going to help them either. That's discrimination. And that's, that goes on all the time that we are around. And to be meek is to be, a, you, you can't do that. You have to be, look at everybody as a soul and a spirit within a body. Okay, number eight, without hypocrisy. Someone that's meek is not a hypocrite. And to be a hypocrite means that you're, you, you don't do what you say. You don't practice what you preach. Christians have to be genuine, faithful Christians. Jesus, and this is all through the Bible, hypocrisy. Jesus said to the scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites, hypocrites, you are like unto whited sepulchers. That's a grave, which indeed appear beautiful outward. They look good on the grave, but inside they're full of dead man's bones. They're dead. They're dead. They don't have spiritual life and all uncleanness, like a rotten, decaying corpse. Corpse, they have all uncleanness. Even so you appear righteous unto men. You look righteous. You say things that sound righteous. You tell people to do things that are righteous. But inside you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. They sin and they, they put Christ... To, to, to trial and they want him dead, they want him silenced, they persecute God's people. That's what religion is today. It's all about getting what they want and looking good but not practicing what they're preaching. Second Timothy 1 5, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you. Unfeigned, it's the same word without hypocrisy. To feign means to fake. It's not fake, it's genuine. The genuine faith. We have to see that in the things that we do. First Timothy 1 5, the end of the commandment, the commandments in the Bible are all about two, loving God and loving our, our neighbor as ourselves. The, the end of the commandment is love, charity, out of a pure heart, a good conscience, and a faith without fake, without hypocrisy, not being fake. It's a true faith. It's the faith of Christ. It's, we're not perfect, but we live out that faith of Christ. And again, that word unfeigned, it's the same Greek word used in James 3.17, without hypocrisy. Okay, for a summary, so the culture tells you that to be weak, to be meek is to be weak and vulnerable, and, and you're just like this mousy person on the side. But biblical meekness is like Jesus Christ was, and Moses was, and all Christians were to be obedient to the Word of God, were to be pure, peaceable, that we share the truth of the Word of God, but we do it without fighting. We do it in a peaceable manner. We share the peace of Christ. If they don't accept it, we move on, but we don't fight with them. We're gentle. We don't, we don't fight, and someone wants to pick a fight with us. They want to correct us. They want to give us more information. We should trust God that He's working in us for His 
purpose and will. We study the Bible and God reveals things to us. We are gentle. We don't force people to believe things. And people shouldn't force us to believe things. It's, it's gentle, but we trust the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit work in us. Well persuaded, we have that assurance of eternity. People see us as a person of hope, person of joy and, and eternal security. Full of mercy, we concern for the poor, the needy, full of good fruit, good character, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, all those things. It's all about love. Without partiality, no discrimination, no active discrimination, and no passive discrimination. Without hypocrisy, we're genuine, faithful Christians. That's what the Bible teaches about meekness. Please consider subscribing to this channel, and thank you very much for watching this video.